Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Shannon and I'm a professional pet portrait and wildlife artist and this channel is all about drawing and coloured pencils. So if that's of interest to you, then keep watching. So today I am drawing this deer in snow, which is my second Christmas card design that I'm working on this year. I did the fox in the last Draw With Me video and I've finished that now. I posted the finished piece over on my Instagram, so if you're interested, go and check it out. But yes, this is the second piece that I'm doing, and they work really well as like a series because they've got the same sort of little bits of twigs and snow and stuff, so I'm thinking if I can find more images that sort of work like this, then I will add more to the collection, but for now I need to get on with this one. Oh, by the way, if you're interested, this is an app called Arty and it's really good because you can see what colours are in different parts of the image and it actually tells you what Polychromos colour from Faber-Castell it recommends. They're not always accurate, I'll be honest, but I tend to go off the colour swatch more than I go off the actual recommended colour. But yeah, I just find that handy for drawing and if you're a bit unsure what sort of tone or colour it is, Highly recommend that app. So as you can see, I've not really done that much so far. I think I'm gonna work on the antlers. I'm just gonna erase that a little bit. I might actually need to stick my drawing down at the top. There we go, that's better. It shouldn't move around now. And I'm going to use Brown Orchid 10% from the Caran Dash Luminance range as the base. I was using the Buff Titanium, but I think it was just a little bit too light. I feel like I just need something a little bit darker because the antlers are very dark. I love the way that the deer is kind of like sort of facing the back, like it's facing away from you. I think it makes it quite an interesting composition. And I'm doing it 8 by 8 inch again, like I did with the fox. So it's only small, but like I said in the last video, I don't want to spend too much time on these Christmas card designs because they're only going to be out once a year. It's not something that I want to do like a huge like statement piece for. I just want to do little designs that I can get onto cards pretty quickly. So just using that as the base. And then I'm going to use my Nougat 178 from the Polychromos. So I'm just going to like ever so slightly outline it. Start shading it in a bit. I'm using the Archie's Aquarelle hot pressed watercolour paper again. So my favourite paper at the minute. Although I do really like the Strathmore Bristol Vellum too. It's just this has that slight extra luxurious feel to it that I like for doing originals and stuff. But yeah, how are you all? I hope you're all doing really well. It's very much like starting to turn to autumn now, which I'm happy about. I've got a bit like fed up of all the heat. I'm ready for cooler days, cosy days in the studio with a candle on. Maybe even a little throw over my knee just to like keep me warm. Oh, just so ready for that. I am a lover of autumn. It's one of my favourite seasons. And I love Halloween as well. We're actually going to book to go to this um, scare place at Camelot Theme Park again this year. It was so good. If you're from like the Lancashire area and you like doing stuff like that, go and have a look at it. Honestly, it was so good. But yes, all of the festive seasons are coming up. I'm quite excited for it this year. I have pretty much nearly booked up now for Christmas commissions, although a lot of the commissions that I've booked in aren't actually for Christmas. They're just sort of for around Christmas time. Like I've got a few for March, I've had another inquiry for a portrait for March, actually. So, yeah, I think I might leave it open just to, like, some more local Christmas commissions to do towards the end of the year because I don't like leaving it too late for postage. 
just going to use burnt umber now. So yeah, I've got so much to be getting on with, but for once in my life, I don't feel stressed about it at all. I feel like I've sort of got my stuff together recently and I've been finding I, I just have a lot more time to do things than ever before. I don't know if it's because I'm feeling more settled in my routines and whatnot, but I've just been feeling really motivated, really, really methodical in the way that I've been doing things and just feel so much more relaxed. I also think that Paddy sort of growing up a little bit has played a huge part in it because anyone who has a puppy or you know adopted a dog anything like that you'll know how much of your time it takes up and I feel like I'm actually getting a bit more of my time back now because it's it's been really good. I think he's finally settling in sort of learning and it's just been a lot better recently, so. Had a very wobbly start to the year, but I think hopefully the end of the year is going to be a nice finish to it. So I'm just getting the shape of that antler. Might even just extend it a bit. There isn't really much detail in these antlers at all more just getting the shape and the shading and stuff right oh i'm reading a really good book at the minute so i like thriller books because i like to be on the edge of my seat i'm just going to use some dark sepia to really darken it up now i like to be on the edge of my seat i like to feel like there's stuff constantly happening to keep me interested and i've been reading a book by lisa jewell called none of this is true and it's so interesting. I, I really like the concept of it. It's about this popular podcaster who sort of like does inspirational chats with um, inspiring women on her podcast. She's getting a little bit bored of it. She's been doing it for a long time. And she bumps into this lady at the pub while she's out having her birthday dinner. And as it conspires, this lady is also out having her birthday dinner and they have the same birthday, they're the same age, they were born in the same hospital. So it's a really coincidental that they, you know, have so many similarities. They get talking anyway. Other lady asks if she would be interested in doing a podcast with her about somebody who's trying to get their life together and isn't quite there yet. So it's very different to a usual inspiring women that have like made it and you know they're looking back at their lives and giving some tips and stuff but yeah it ends up being quite dark and messy and there's more to it than meets the eye it's just go and have a look at it if you like filler books because it's so good it's been keeping me really interested all the way through I've been wanting to read during the day which isn't like me usually I just read at night time before bed but yeah, it's been very gripping so far. I've not finished it, so I can't speak for the ending just yet, but I'm really enjoying that. If you've got any recommendations that are similar, do let me know because I'm always on the hunt for new books. I have Goodreads. If anyone's got Goodreads, I don't know how you add each other on it, to be fair. I don't know. Do you have to be friends with them on Facebook? I don't know. But yeah, I like looking at other people's Goodreads and seeing what, what they've been reading. So I'm really enjoying that so far. Right, I'm going to bring it up a little bit now. I'm filming this on my phone this time because I've realised it's actually so much better quality sound wise and picture quality wise. So... And it's easier to set up. I don't know why I kept insisting on using my camera. I just thought, oh, it might be better, but you try these things. It's a lovely sunny autumn day today. I've got the door open. Paddy's having a little sunbathe. Been very drizzly up until now so you've got to make the most of the nice weather although I'm not mad about the drizzle when you're inside I feel like it's a nice feeling having the rain on the window but then when you have to go out somewhere it's not nice so I'm just 
very grateful that I spend most of my time at home. I feel like I am very much like a homebody. I love being at home. I love making my home nice, nice environment to be in. I'm very heavily affected by environment, so I like to make sure that it's a nice, comfortable space. Although we really could do with somewhere bigger, it's a bit small here. And I'm starting to really feel how small it is recently. I think an extra room for my studio would just be heavenly. But until then, we make do, don't we? I've been keeping my eye out, seeing if there's anything nice, but it's just so hard at the minute. I feel like everyone is applying for the same places and having a dog makes it a bit more difficult. A lot of places don't accept pets. So we'll see. For now, it does the job, so. And this little bit here. But yeah, as always, let me know what you're up to while you're watching this. Are you working? Are you making food? Are you just chilling? I might actually sharpen that. That's a bit better. I've been really enjoying drawing with my desk flat lately. I go through phases where I like it on a tilt and then where I like it flat. And at the minute, I'm really enjoying it flat. I don't know why. It's probably not the best for my back, <laughs> but I don't, I honestly don't draw for long periods of time. So I'm not too worried. If I was drawing all day, every day, then yes, I probably would be very worried. But at the minute, I just do a few hours a day, really. But I find by doing that, I actually, the hours that I spend drawing, I'm really productive and I'm like not really messing much up. Whereas if I draw for very long periods of time, I sort of get a bit slow, a little bit, a little bit, um, I don't know. I just feel like I'm not as productive. Sometimes I, f I feel like I can get the same amount of work done in a few hours when I'm really focused that I would in like half a day when I'm not being very focused. It's very funny how it all works, but yeah, I usually do a little bit of drawing in the afternoon, get all the hard stuff done in the morning, then I can just switch off and draw in the afternoon and it's been really nice to do it that way. So I'm not completely filling this in with the nougat. I'm sort of like doing it quite patchily. So it's a little bit imperfect, a little bit textured. It looks a little bit, not boring, but there's not much to it. But I will be adding some snow on top with my Museum Aquarelle watercolour pencil. I used that for the fox and it looked really good. It came out so nice and it was really easy. Such a good tip. You just activate the pencil with a little bit of water, dab it on the drawing and it looks like little flecks of snow. So you can make any drawing a snowy drawing if you really want to. So I don't know how long I'll draw this for, but I just thought in between doing my work in the morning and my commissions in the afternoon, I would just hop on and do a little bit of this. I want to get these on Etsy as soon as possible, really, and then they can start ranking. So when I used to work in marketing, I learned a little bit about SEO, but I, I never fully understood it. But one of the key things that they used to push for was to get all the Christmas products and content and stuff online as soon as possible in like end of summer. And then they could start ranking for it with SEO, with the keywords and stuff, because people start searching for stuff like that early. So the earlier you can get it online, the more likely you are to build up a good ranking, as far as I understand it anyway. So I would like to get these on soon. <sighs> He does that every time he yawns. He does a little cry. 
That's my dog, Paddy, by the way, <laughs> if you're just joining me for the first time on this video. Let's do this little bit here. I have just scooted him under my desk and I'm giving him little head strokes while I'm drawing. <laughs> Multitasking. I feel like this year has gone really, really fast. Is anyone else like a bit scared of how fast time goes? I don't like it. It makes me feel weird. And I feel like my life's just flashing before my eyes, but I feel like at the same time it's because I enjoy what I do so much that days don't drag like they used to drag so much when I had a full-time job and I feel like now the days just seem to like go in the blink of an eye I'll be drawing and like three hours later I'm like whoa where did that time go oh it's such a weird sensation and I know it's only going to get faster and faster so yeah that does freak me out a little bit. Like I always have so many ideas and plans. And then before I know it, the time that I plan to do it, it's been and gone already. This is another stock image, by the way, if you're wondering. I just get a lot of my images from free stock websites where you're allowed to do whatever you want with them. They're royalty free, sort of like on the open market anyone can use them kind of thing so you don't need to worry about permissions or anything like that i'm just blending this into the dark areas i do actually have an in-depth antler tutorial on my patreon it's on the fundamentals tier because it is just like a focus tutorial on one antler but i sort of go over the techniques that i use and how i get the texture in that video well it's a series of videos so go and check that out if you are interested. I am in the process of updating all of my Patreon tutorial pages that are on my website because they don't have anywhere to link to each tutorial on Patreon. I have to do it myself. So if it's not on there, I, don't, I can't remember if I added that one on there yet, but I am in the process of doing all that. I always share my tutorials on Instagram too, so you can sort of go through my old posts and see which ones are tutorials and which ones are on which tier and stuff like that. Obviously, this isn't really a tutorial, it's just me drawing and chatting at the same time. So yeah, that's a little bit more in depth on there. Just doing lots and lots of layers to build up the shape of it. So sort of giving the illusion of detail with these little swirls and patches when really it's just pretty low effort. I feel like I'm always drawn to drawing animals that I've already drawn previously. <laughs> I don't know if there's like a comfort in the familiarity of it. I've drawn a deer a few times now and I've drawn a fox a few times so I don't know whether I should focus on doing more animals that I haven't done before. Maybe I should. I would like to do some more new subjects, but I also do like having oh, a few different options for the same animal. There's so much stuff that I'd like to draw. A lot of my drawings tend to be more like not always, but like British wildlife as well, wildlife that you would see here. Because when I go to my craft fairs and stuff, people like that sort of thing. So I've try been trying to build up that collection before I go venturing into like more exotic or African wildlife or anything like that. I think it would be nice to have like various different collections of animals in my portfolio. But it all takes good time. I feel like we need a little bit more. I feel like I need to do some sort of shading going sideways to build up a bit more of a texture like this. Trying not to press too hard.
feel like this needs a little bit more here. And then, a bit of dark sepia. My pencil tray is currently a mess. I don't know what happens to it, but it's like I just forget to tidy it up. And I'll be working on a few drawings at once, whether that's like commissions, Patreon, YouTube, whatever. And I just, I, I don't ever take away the pencils that I've used in a drawing once I've finished. I just <laughs> sort of leave them there and then add more and more instead of putting them back in the big like pencil case that I have. I always think, oh, but what if I need it? And then I forget what colour it was that I used. And it's really silly. I should probably just write down the colours that I'm using in each drawing. And then I can look back and be like, okay, this drawing is a similar colour palette. What did I use in that one? Rather than sort of keeping them on my pencil tray and thinking, oh, well, I might need them for another drawing. Like, it doesn't make any sense. It just makes it harder to find the pencils. I think a lot of artists do that though, like they just have an absolute mess of pencils or whatever medium it is and they just sort of have a bit of a, a method to the madness. I am generally quite like a organised, somewhat tidy person but when it comes to my pencils I just, I can't seem to have a system that works. I feel like this is a slightly boring area that I'm drawing. I feel like it'll be more interesting once I get on to like the actual deer itself, but I just really wanted to do these antlers. Darkening it up round here. Oh, I'm going to see. <laughs> I'm going to see Shania Twain next Monday. Shania Twain is like my favorite, like all time singer. From like being a child, I used to love the. Is it the Come On Over album? I love her old stuff. I'm not so much interested in her new stuff. It's not really my cup of tea. But I'm, I'm so excited to see Man I Feel Like a Woman live. <laughs> we um, got the tickets for my mum's birthday last year. And it doesn't feel like two minutes since we went out for tea and gave her the tickets. She had no idea that we'd got her anything. Oh, it was so nice. It was such a good night. And it's come round so fast. I can't believe it's next week. I'm well excited. I just hope that she does a lot of her old stuff. So that should be good. It's in Manchester. I've seen a few videos of her tour and it does look like she does quite a bit of new stuff, but it'll still be fun anyway. I always, it was on my bucket list to go and see her in Vegas when she was doing the, um, what do they call it? The residency there. I just always wanted to go and see her. And then when she did the UK tour, we were like, we have to go. This is non-negotiable. <laughs> and then I have Fallout Boy in October and... And we've got, oh, I also bought my dad tickets for the Australian Pink Floyd, which are a tribute band to Pink Floyd, obviously. Um, but they're want, meant to be one of the best and they have like a really similar sound. He's actually seen them before, so he said they were really good. I didn't know he'd seen them before when I bought the tickets, but that should be really good. So we're seeing them in December. Then I don't really have any more gigs booked. I'm going to have to have a look at some. A few people that I've never seen that I would love to go and see. I 
I really want to go and see James Bay because I love his um, newer albums. I think that would be a nice chilled gig. There's so many people that I'd love to see. Some of the best bands... I keep clicking on that by accident. Some of the best bands that I've seen live have been London Grammar. They're incredible live. Uh, Sam Fender is really good live. I've seen him a few times. I feel like I should probably go on a break from seeing Sam Fender live because it does tend to do a similar set every time, but is my favourite, so... Uh, what else? Michael Bublé was amazing live. Like, he's not somebody that I, like, listen to that much, but I know all of his music and I love all of his music, but... I was really, really pleasantly surprised how good that was. And I would definitely go again. A lot of the people that we spoke to were like, yeah, I've seen him five times and all this. So it seems like a lot of people go regularly. I need a bit more nougat there. Don't want to make these too dark. But I might add a little bit of black. Oh, Little Mix were really good. I saw them on their farewell tour. Such a fangirl. They were amazing. I'd like to see the Arctic Monkeys live. But I don't like the new stuff. Again, it's I hate when I don't like the new stuff that an artist brings out because then I feel like they're going to just play all the new stuff. I prefer their, like, older stuff. I imagine... I don't know. Would they play a lot of older stuff? I feel like they don't anymore. I'm going to add a bit here. I might start doing a little bit on the ears and stuff now. And I'm going to use... Buff titanium, I think, because it's quite like a sandy coloured ear. I don't know how long I'm going to do for this for, but I feel like I'm on a bit of a roll, in a bit of a drawing mood, so. A little bit like out of focus, this ear, so I'm not going to add too much detail, so I'm just going to Again, give a bit of an illusion of detail. And I have to really concentrate when I'm drawing like a small scale because there isn't much room to go wrong. <laughs> I might add a bit of like a cold grey colour. I'll try cold grey too. Don't think cold grey one would do a whole lot. And then back to the nougat. It's had some bent on there. So I went and looked at the venue for coloured pencil workshops last week or the week before. And it was really nice. I've actually um, potentially got a workshop coming up, but I will let you know more about that when it's actually like in, you know, in the diary, fully booked in. So that should be really fun. I need some burnt orca, bit of an orange tone. Maybe some more nougat. I 
really want to see Luke Combs live. I tried getting tickets for me and Scott for his Christmas present last year and it, literally in like two seconds they were all gone. It was madness. I really want to get tickets and I keep seeing Twickets pop up with um, people selling them. So I might see if nearer the time I can get hold of some. I think I need a bit of light cobalt turquoise. I love this colour when I'm trying to add like a bit of a cooler tone a pop of like I don't know it just seems to work with like snow and stuff like that really well it's my secret weapon I love that colour right maybe a bit of dark sepia I have like really simplified this down add a bit around there I don't know how much of the detail to add on this bit because there's like little bits of snow. I don't want to add it all in with the museum aquarelle. I feel like I do need to like draw around some of the bits of snow to add, but yeah, I just don't know how much of it to do. Hmm. I think I might just draw it in and then I could always add some extra details with the museum aquarelle so I need a cool base so I need I'll go one as the base it kind of like goes onto the antler a little bit there too Thank you to everyone who comments on my videos by the way like I, I do always read them it takes me a little bit of time to like get back to everyone sometimes because I'm so busy just drawing and you know doing all the creative stuff but I do read for everything and when I get chance I do reply I really appreciate you taking the time out of your like busy day to leave a comment or even like the video it's very much appreciated because you don't have to do that. Add a bit there. Oh my God, I completely forgot to say that I'm so grateful to everyone who subscribed because we've hit 8,000 subscribers. Like what is, how has that even happened? Just gonna add a little bit of buff titanium here. But yeah, wow, I am... Um, in shock that we've reached this milestone already I feel like it's happened really quickly and yeah I'm just so grateful to everyone who watches I didn't expect to have that many people here already so thank you so much I think when you put so much time into something like this and you don't really see anything any like major results for a long time once you do start seeing like growth or whatever, it's like, it just makes it all the more worth it. You've just got to enjoy what you're doing because I just love making videos like this. This is like my number one favorite thing to do. Just drawing around the snow. Bit of a trial and error doing this. I'm hoping it's going to turn out nice. I think it will. So sort of just like drawing in between all the little clumps and sort of like broken pieces of snow. I don't know whether I need more of a, yeah, like a cold grey five. 
Actually, I'm going to try a cold grey three first. See how that looks. That's quite nice. Don't know if it's dark enough though. Hmm, probably not. Here we are. Finally, cold grey five. That's better. I always think you don't want to press too hard with the colour. So if the colour isn't quite cutting it, it's not doing enough, you probably need a darker colour rather than just like pressing on really hard with it. So this seems to add a bit more depth and dimension than the other one did. Wanted a little bit more contrast. Right, let's add burnt umber. I need to darken up this ear. Crow's being very noisy. I love listening to the birds and stuff though. There we go, that's looking a little bit better. It's almost like the snow's fallen off the tree onto the deer and it's sort of like gone in big clumps all over it. I really hope I find another image that sort of fits into the series. Maybe I could even just find an animal that I wanted to draw and then add my own snow and little uh, bushy bits or whatever they're called. Just these little twigs and branches and stuff. I am a little bit more comfortable with like making things up myself. Well, more so using multiple images to create something unique these days than I used to be. all about getting like the perspective and stuff right so right that is looking so much better i think we need a bit more detail in here though okay and i'm gonna start on this antler Let's do that little bit first. I feel like I've just lost where that little bit were. I have so much respect for artists who can literally make things up from the head. I can't get my head around how people do that. I have never been able to do that and I probably never will. <laughs> Sad truth. Yeah, like I can't just pick up a piece of paper and a pencil and just doodle something that looks good. Like my doodles don't look good. I have to copy from something to like some extent in order for it to look good which sad times for me but I think a lot of people are like that Ooh. doesn't make you any less of an artist if you're the same as me though and you can't just make something up from your head 
not every piece of art has to be something completely like unique and made up. It can just be something that you've made your own. And that is art in itself, so. That's why photographers are honestly everything to, to us pet portrait artists and we really appreciate all the wonderful wildlife images out there that photographers put online for us to use. Without them we would be struggling. <laughs> Starting up this antler. I've got Michael Bublé stuck in my head now <laughs> from talking about him earlier. Oh, we've got Wicked booked as well. That's my other thing that I love doing, going to musical theatre. Oh, I just love it. If I wasn't doing this, I mean, I'm going to say this, but it wouldn't happen anyway, because I wouldn't, I'm just not, I'm not a good singer, but I would love to be in like musicals, but I'm just not, I can't sing and I can't act. So I don't know in what world that would happen, but if I, if I could, I'd love to do that. I'd love to be like in Les Mis or something. That's like my favourite show that I've ever seen. Mm, smudged it all there. This is why I need tracing paper under my hand, but hey ho. Oh, yeah, I'd love to do that. But I am one of the worst singers ever. I cannot sing, and my friends and family all are very aware of that. Even though I can't sing, I like to do karaoke a lot, and it's probably unfortunate for the people that are around me. I don't do it in public though, oh my god no, only like when you go around to your mate's house and stuff. When people like do it in uh, pubs and stuff like that, no I could not do that. I'd probably clear the place out. I'm going to add some cold grey one to this bit here because there's snow. And bringing this up. Is supposed to be a little bit coming out there. It's hard to see because there's branches in the way on the picture, but I feel like that's what it's meant to be, hopefully. Mm -hmm. 
there's a TikTok song that keeps getting stuck in my head. There's this TikTok account that just posts videos of chickens dancing while they're like, just bobbing along to the music. <laughs> and there's a song that they always use and it gets proper stuck in my head. I feel like me drawing is just like a variety of different songs that just pop into my head every now and then, especially when I've not got music on. like a Spanish song. It gets stuck in my head all the time. Right, definitely need a bit of burnt umber. It's quite dark going up here. Oh, this is a pencil extender, by the way, from Amazon. Really good for when your pencils are getting short. I like to have like a good amount of length to the pencil for it to feel like, like I've got control over it in my hand. So just helps to keep your pencils going for a little bit longer. And when they get this short, I always use my little metal sharpener to sharpen them because they don't, they don't really fit right into my uh, Derwent Superpoint manual sharpener. If they're too short, they just wouldn't come out. You could just use this little metal sharpener for everyday use. Like I just like having that really long point. I don't know why, it just seems to give me a little bit more of a looser... Con I don't know, I can't describe it. It seems to give more of like a, a looser grip on the pencil that gives you more fluidity. I don't know. I don't know what it is about it that I like. But I just do. <laughs> like if you look at the difference in length, that one is sharpened with the Derwent manual super point and that one is with the little metal one. So it just gives it a longer tip. Don't know why it's good, it just is. Is anyone else absolutely sick of getting those? Hi, are you available for a commission? I want you to draw my son's pet. I am willing to pay you such an amount. I want his name written on the bottom of it. Oh, I honestly, if I had a pound for every time I got one of those, I would be probably rich. <laughs> it's just ridiculous how many people are doing that scam. I don't know if it's the same person just creating multiple accounts and trying to look but it's just driving me nuts and you don't want to like ignore people in case it is genuine but it like it's not most of the time it's the same scam over and over again and they, I think they try and like steal your paypal or, I don't know they try and do something they have like a funny way of wanting to pay and it's just happening more and more, these like people trying to scam small business owners and artists, just trying to get by and make a living. But it's just not okay. There's all sorts going around. There's one where they ask you if they can buy one of your original artworks, but it's like they don't, they don't know who you actually are. It's like the cold emails sort of just reaching out randomly. You know when it's legit because someone actually acknowledges like you as a person and they're not just coming at it really like impersonally. It's just scams seem to be rife at the minute. 
So yeah, if anything ever feels a little bit fishy, just be careful. Don't give any details away. If somebody doesn't want to pay by bank transfer or through PayPal and they're asking like a weird way to do it, it's probably a scam. And they tend to use really like stock looking images. When this when you say, Oh, will you send me a picture of the pet? They look like stock images, so just look out for it. I think if you're a pet portrait artist you've probably already come across these by now, but they tend to be mostly on Instagram. But I have had emails come through that are scammers too. This man, this email where he was saying he wanted to buy some paintings for his wife, which I always find that suspicious anyway, when someone says they want to buy paintings because I don't do painting. And I know some people say, oh, I love your paintings when they mean like my drawings. The ones where it's a scam, they always say, I want to buy your paintings. I like your landscape work and stuff. And I think I don't even do that. And it, that's when you know that it's just not to be trusted. A lot of them, they ask if they can pay by cheque or they have to send you a, a picture or something. It's dead weird. In a time when there's like a cost of living crisis, the fact that people are really trying to scam people. I wonder how many people have like actually gone ahead with it and like lost money or been hacked or whatever it is that they do. Add a bit more here. And definitely need a bit of dark sepia in the ear. Maybe a bit of black. I feel like this video is quite long, longer than usual. Add quite a bit here because it is very dark underneath that antler and on this right hand side. I have lightened the image a little bit though so it's not as dark as the original. I don't like to draw anything too dark. I like it to have a bit of like a softness to it and not too harsh. Definitely need to darken this bit though. Mm, maybe this bit. It'll look a bit more interesting once I've added the little flecks of snow into the antlers, but yeah, they're just quite simple really. There's not too much detail in them. I might just add a little bit of cold grey three just to try and break this snow up a little bit. Don't want it to just look like one big patch. And I'll darken up the one on the ear in a second as well. bit dark around here. I'm hungry now. It's nearly lunchtime. Oh, my stomach just rumbled. I don't know if you can hear that. I 
get off the Colgrave 5. Darken that up a little bit more. And I'm just going to add a little bit of snore. So over to the edge of the ear. I don't know if it'll really do a whole lot, but... Break this up a little bit more. Add a bit here. Might add a bit more into this ear. A little bit more detail. maybe a bit more nougat just to blend that a little bit better maybe just a bit more whole grey three there And I might leave it there for that part. I feel like this is quite a long video and I'm happy with the progress that I've done there, getting those two antlers done. So I really hope you enjoyed this draw with me video. Please make sure to give the video a like if you did because it really helps me out. Subscribe to see more videos like this and I shall hopefully see you in the next one. So bye for now.